to the enchanted realm of King Arthur, where legends breathe and destiny dances on the edge of a blade. Prepare to embark on the second enthralling episode, Excalibur and the Lady of the Lake, a chapter steeped in ancient prophecies and the resonance of destiny. In this installment, we journey deeper into the heart of Camelot, a kingdom alive with magic and promise, where a humble squire named Arthur embraces the mantle of kingship. Behold the emergence of Excalibur, a legendary sword forged in the crucible of fate and destined to shape the future of a realm. As Arthur grapples with the immense responsibilities and challenges that come with wielding this fabled blade, the mystical shores of Avalon beckon, revealing a pivotal encounter with the enigmatic Lady of the Lake. Join us as we delve into a tapestry of courage, wisdom, and the unbreakable bond between a king and his destiny. The saga of Arthur Pendragon unfolds, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of time. Welcome to Excalibur and the Lady of the Lake, where the echoes of ancient tales resonate in the corridors of fate. Once upon a time, in a land shrouded in mystery and steeped in the mists of legend, there lived a humble squire named Arthur. Little did he know, his fate was intertwined with a destiny far greater than he could ever imagine. Arthur, a kind-hearted and valiant young man, was born in the kingdom of Camelot, a realm ruled by a wise and just king. However, the land was beset by troubles, and the kingdom was without a true heir to the throne. In the heart of this tumultuous realm lay a lake, mysterious and enchanting, known as the Lake of Avalon. Its waters whispered of ancient prophecies, foretelling the rise of a true king, destined to unite the land and bring forth an era of peace and prosperity. This prophecy spoke of a magnificent sword, forged in the fiery depths of the earth, destined to be wielded only by the rightful king. This sword was Excalibur, a blade imbued with magical properties and said to grant its wielder unmatched strength and wisdom. For years, Excalibur rested deep within the heart of a stone, surrounded by a shimmering lake, waiting for the one worthy enough to draw it forth. Many had tried and failed, for only a true king with a noble heart and pure intent could succeed in this endeavor. Arthur had heard whispers of this legendary sword and the prophecy that accompanied it. He was drawn to the idea of a rightful king and the hope it held for a better future. He yearned to bring peace to the land and to free his people from the grasp of darkness. Guided by a sense of duty and destiny, Arthur embarked on a perilous quest to find Excalibur and claim his rightful place as the King of Camelot. Little did he know that this journey would shape the destiny of a realm and a legacy 
that would echo through the ages. The quest had begun, and the young squire was ready to embrace his destiny and the trials that lay ahead. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson, Arthur set forth on a journey that would unravel the secrets hidden within the heart of Avalon. A mystical island veiled in the mists of ancient magic. Avalon, a place of ethereal beauty and otherworldly allure, was a realm between realms, where reality blurred into the fantastical. The island seemed to float upon the tranquil waters of a lake, surrounded by a mist that whispered ancient incantations. The air was tinged with a subtle sweetness, and the breeze carried the promises of destiny. Guided by stories and the faint whispers of the wind, Arthur ventured deeper into the heart of this enigmatic island. Trees, older than memory, stood as silent witnesses to the eons that had passed. Flowers of every hue adorned the landscape, their fragrance intoxicating, as if an offering to the unseen forces that dwelled here. And at the heart of it all lay the Lake of Avalon, a body of water so crystal clear it mirrored the heavens above. It shimmered like a liquid sapphire, its depths concealing ancient mysteries. It was upon the shores of this lake that the Lady of the Lake, a figure cloaked in enigma, held her timeless domain. The Lady of the Lake, a being of grace and beauty, was the keeper of Excalibur guardian of its secrets and its rightful bestower. She was a figure of ancient wisdom, a presence woven into the very fabric of the island and the lake. Her essence was one with the ebb and flow of the waters, her wisdom as deep as the lake itself. As Arthur approached the lake, an eerie stillness settled upon the air. He could feel the weight of history and destiny pressing upon him. The waters seemed to beckon, their ripples inviting him to uncover his true path. With a mixture of trepidation and determination, he waded into the lake guided by a force beyond mere mortal comprehension. And then, from the depths, emerged a figure veiled in shimmering mist and light. It was the Lady of the Lake, her presence both commanding and comforting. Her eyes held the wisdom of the ages, and her voice resonated with the echoes of eternity. She greeted Arthur, acknowledging the bravery that led him to her shores in that sacred moment amidst the haunting beauty of Avalon and under the watchful gaze of the Lady of the Lake. Arthur's fate was forever altered. The meeting was a convergence of destiny and purpose, setting into motion a chain of events that would define his reign as the rightful king, bound to Excalibur, and the protector of a realm in need. In the presence of the Lady of the Lake, Arthur felt a blend of awe and humility. He stood at the water's edge, gazing into the depths of the lake where the secrets of kings and kingdoms lay submerged. The Lady of the Lake, her eyes a serene reflection of the waters around her, spoke in a voice like a gentle breeze, 
yet resonant with authority. She spoke of destiny, of the prophecy that foretold Arthur's rightful claim to Excalibur. She spoke of the duty that came with the blade, the burden and honor of being a king. Arthur, she said, her voice carrying the weight of centuries. The fate of a realm lies within your grasp. The sword, Excalibur, a creation of magic and might, awaits its true bearer. Arthur nodded, a mixture of determination and trepidation coursing through him. He understood the magnitude of this moment. He extended his hand, palm open, ready to accept the blade that would bind him to his destiny. With a solemn nod, the Lady of the Lake raised her hand, and the waters of Avalon began to stir. A brilliant light emerged from the lake, accompanied by a crescendo of celestial music that seemed to emanate from the very soul of the island. From the midst of the lake, Excalibur rose, its hilt adorned with jewels that seemed to hold the light of the moon and the fire of the sun. The sword gleamed with an ethereal brilliance, and Arthur's eyes widened in awe at the sight. The Lady of the Lake gently took hold of the hilt her hands seemingly unaffected by the water that clung to the blade. She then turned to Arthur, and with a serene grace, she presented the blade to him. Arthur Pendragon, the true king of Camelot, I bestow upon you Excalibur. May its power be a beacon of hope and justice in your hands. Arthur his heart now resolute and his spirit of fire, reached out and took hold of Excalibur. As his fingers wrapped around the hilt, he felt a surge of energy, a connection to something ancient and powerful. The weight of kingship rested in his grip, and he knew he was forever bound to a destiny greater than himself. Excalibur, once an enigma, now felt like an extension of his very being. It was a moment of transformation, a merging of man and myth, as Arthur became the embodiment of the prophecy. He raised the blade, its gleaming edge catching the last rays of the setting sun and he felt the power and responsibility that came with it. The Lady of the Lake smiled, a timeless understanding in her eyes. Embrace your destiny, Arthur, and let Excalibur be the beacon that guides you through the trials that await. With Excalibur in hand and the Lady's wisdom resonating within him, Arthur was prepared to fulfill the prophecy and lead Camelot into a new era. The power of Excalibur surged through his veins, ready to be wielded for the good of the realm and the honor of the true king. With Excalibur in his grasp, Arthur's ascendancy was swift and profound. The once humble squire now stood as a beacon of hope and courage, his every action resonating with the power of the legendary blade. The kingdom of Camelot embraced him, rallying behind their true king. As Arthur unsheathed Excalibur and held it aloft, its radiant glow imbuing him with an aura of invincibility Whispers of his deeds spread like wildfire. Tales of his valor and righteousness in battles against tyranny 
and darkness echoed through the land. The people hailed him as their chosen leader, and his reputation as a just and compassionate king grew with each passing day. The influence of Excalibur was undeniable, its magical essence guiding Arthur's decisions and actions. With the blade at his side, he inspired loyalty and devotion among his knights and subjects. The sword itself seemed to pulse with life, aiding Arthur in the righteous path he had chosen. However, Arthur's journey was not devoid of challenges. The mantle of kingship came with a weighty burden the realm faced adversaries and trials that tested his resolve and the might of Excalibur. He found himself pitted against forces that sought to disrupt the peace he worked tirelessly to establish. One such adversary was the malevolent sorcerer Morgana, a formidable wielder of dark magic. Morgana sought to reclaim the throne for herself, and her malevolent ambitions threatened the stability of Camelot. Arthur clashed with her in fierce battles, the clash of steel and magic illuminating the battleground. Excalibur's blade sliced through the darkness, confronting Morgana's maleficent powers it was a testament to Arthur's skill and the sword's magic that he stood firm against her onslaughts, defending the kingdom and its people. But with each victory, he was reminded of the delicate balance between the power he wielded and the responsibility he bore. As the challenges mounted, Arthur learned that the true test of a king was not merely in battle, but in the wisdom to wield his power judiciously. He faced moral dilemmas and decisions that weighed heavily on his heart. The honor and justice Excalibur represented guided him through these trials and Arthur grew not only in martial prowess, but in the depth of his character. With every obstacle he overcame, Arthur became a symbol of hope, a paragon of virtue. And though the burden of kingship was sometimes overwhelming, the unwavering support of his people and the strength of Excalibur reminded him of the destiny he embraced, a destiny that required both valor and benevolence. As Arthur's reign continued, the weight of kingship bore down upon him, becoming an internal struggle that gnawed at his spirit. The power of Excalibur was a double-edged sword, granting him strength and authority but also burdening him with immense responsibility and moral choices. The knights were restless for Arthur. In the quiet solitude of his chamber, he often found himself staring at Excalibur, contemplating the implications of his role as the wielder of such a potent artifact. He questioned if he was living up to the expectations set by the prophecy, if he was truly worthy of the trust bestowed upon him, doubts and fears crept into Arthur's mind like shadows, threatening to consume the light of his resolve. Was he leading Camelot toward the envisioned golden age? or were his actions inadvertently sowing the seeds of its downfall? The 
pressure to live up to the legacy of Excalibur, and the vision of a united kingdom weighed heavily upon him. In moments of doubt, Arthur turned to his trusted advisor and confidant, Merlin, the wise and ancient wizard. Merlin, who had guided him from a young age and witnessed his growth, understood the turmoil within the young king. Their conversations, often held by the flickering light of a solitary candle, delved deep into the heart of leadership and the moral complexities it entailed. Arthur, Merlin began one night, his voice both gentle and knowing. The burden of leadership is indeed great. But remember, true strength lies not just in the might of a blade, but in the compassion and wisdom that guide its wielder. Merlin shared tales of wise rulers and valiant knights, of their triumphs and their downfalls. He reminded Arthur that even legends had their moments of doubt and struggle. The true essence of leadership, Merlin emphasized, lay in humility, in acknowledging one's limitations and seeking counsel when needed. Excalibur is a symbol of hope and justice, Merlin continued, but its true power lies in the heart that wields it. A king is not defined by the sword alone, but by the values and principles he upholds. Arthur absorbed Merlin's wisdom, feeling a sense of reassurance and renewed determination. The burden of kingship was still weighty, but he realized that he did not have to bear it alone. With Merlin's guidance and the love of his people, Arthur found the strength to navigate the moral maze that came with wielding Excalibur. From that day on, Arthur faced his internal struggle with a newfound resolve. Understanding that the true measure of a king was not in perfection, but in the willingness to learn and grow, to adapt and make the right choices even when faced with adversity. And with the wisdom imparted by Merlin he carried the weight of kingship with a heart fortified by compassion and integrity. As Arthur's reign flourished and the kingdom of Camelot prospered under the just and benevolent rule of its rightful king, the fate of Excalibur remained a subject of both mystery and prophecy. The legendary blade continued to serve as a symbol of hope and justice, a beacon that guided Arthur and his kingdom through trials and triumphs. Excalibur, though a powerful weapon, transcended its role as a mere sword. It became a representation of Arthur's leadership, a manifestation of his commitment to uphold honor, fairness, and the well-being of his people. The blade's destiny was entwined with the fate of the realm, an instrument of unity and a reminder of the ideals Arthur embodied. The whispers of the prophecy passed through generations, spoke of a time when Excalibur would be returned to the Lady of the Lake resting once again in the depths of Avalon until the realm needed it anew. Its fate was cyclic, tied to the ebb and flow of a kingdom's destiny. As Arthur's reign continued, whispers of a golden age spread 
across the lands. The people of Camelot lived in relative peace, their lives touched by the prosperity brought forth by a king who ruled with both a firm hand and a compassionate heart. Excalibur remained at Arthur's side, a constant companion in times of need, a reminder of the legacy he carried. In the twilight of his years, Arthur, now an elder statesman, revered for his wisdom and kindness, made a pilgrimage to Avalon. Guided by the ancient prophecies and the longing to fulfill his destiny, he approached the shores of the Lake of Avalon once more. With a heart heavy with both gratitude and duty, he stood by the lake. Excalibur in hand, and offered it to the Lady of the Lake as a gesture of humility and obedience to the cycle of fate. The Lady emerged from the depths, her presence ethereal, and received the blade. Arthur, she spoke, her voice echoing through the silence. You have fulfilled your destiny and Excalibur has served its purpose in your hands. As the sword submerged once again into the depths, Arthur knew that its legacy would endure. He had witnessed the kingdom's transformation under its influence, and its spirit would forever live within the hearts of his people. Closing this chapter of his life, Arthur stood on the shores of Avalon, reflecting on the journey that had brought him to this moment. He knew that though this chapter was ending, a new one was beginning, a chapter where the legend of Excalibur would continue to inspire, where the ideals he held shape the realm, and where hope would forever endure. And as the sun set, painting the sky in shades of orange and red, Arthur embraced the future, ready to meet the adventures that lay ahead. <laughs>